This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and the company. And we're going to be looking at another high-end gaming laptop. This is from Origin. Origin PC makes high-end gaming laptops and desktops, too. We've looked at some of their offerings before in the 15-inch size range. This is the Origin Eon 17X 10 Series. That means it has NVIDIA 10 Series Pascal graphics cards. And particularly exciting, we have the NVIDIA GTX 1080 card in here. Uh, this is the one that is truly ready for 4K gaming at good frame rates. We're going to look at it now. So first, a little background. Now, we've reviewed Origin's gaming laptops before, but for those who haven't heard of them, they're what we would call a boutique maker. You can order them online. In fact, that's how you get them. And Origin is a company founded by the folks who actually originally created Alienware. It got sold off to Dell quite a while ago, and they've been troopering on in beautiful Miami, Florida, making these high-end gaming laptops. This starts the Eon 17X around $2,100, but that's a probably, if you're an enthusiast, a configuration you actually wouldn't buy. Realistically speaking, it starts around $2,600 and goes up a, quite a bit from there. We have a really tricked out one, so it sells for $3,500. It weighs 8.6 pounds, that's 3.9 kilograms for those of you who think and speak in metric. 1.6 inches thick, which is 40.6 millimeters. This is a hunky chunky gaming laptop, not one of those slim and light ones. And for those of you who are really following gaming laptop market, this is the chassis, same chassis as the Clevo P775DM3, which is also known as the Sager N. P9172, and there's shankers and some others also that are using this chassis. What Origin does is they decide what internals they want to change around and upgrade. For example, in the Clevo, the GTX 1060M is the graphics card that you get. With Origin PC, Origin PC, you can go with a GTX 1060, a GTX 1070, or our GTX 1080. So they're pushing the envelope there and pushing the cooling uh, model, honestly, for this particular chassis. Now, Clevo does have 1080-equipped laptops, and they use a different chassis for that. So there's your background. There's the background on the hardware. It's not unusual for companies to license chassis designs from the likes of Clevo and so on. Now, like the Clevo on which this is based, this has a desktop CPU inside, so it's socketed. In theory, it's upgradable, assuming that the motherboard chipset is compatible with future CPUs. You can get it with an i5, an, I an overclockable i7 quad-core desktop CPU. That's what we have in here, the Intel Core i7-6700K with a 4 gigahertz base clock speed. You can overclock that. So here, this is the control center that... Origin offers. You can choose power saving. Good luck with that. It's, you know, it's a big gaming laptop. Battery life is really not going to be above two to three hours for productivity work anyway. Quiet, entertainment, performance, and so on. And we've got some shortcuts to the flexi key utility, which is the keyboard utility I'll show you in a minute. GPU and CPU overclocking as well over here, and your ability to turn off the dreaded Windows key, which when you're gaming you don't want to hit accidentally, do you? Now, if you want to get to these, by the way, there's no icon on the desktop. There's no hardware shortcut key. You won't even find them in the start menu, which I don't think is the wisest idea. So you have to actually find them in here and double click on it. So control center is what we're using right now. So you'll click on that. And the keyboard utility is called flexi keys and it's over here. And there's individual CPU and GPU overclocking shortcut icons down here in your taskbar tray as well. And it'll give you a little warning to say you might be shortening the life of your system and so on. And yeah. And this is the keyboard utility. So you can assign macros over here. You can change the color and backlighting right here. It's an RGB backlit zone keyboard backlighting system, as you can see right here. And the keyboard, by the way, it's not one of those really super deep travel design keyboards, but it's a very nice feel. I really like typing on this, and it's anti-ghosting, so it's worked out well for gaming for me as well. Trackpad here obviously has dedicated buttons. Soft touch, not too soft, not too firm. Goldilocks would be happy there. It's fine. The only thing I found is with two-finger gestures, it seemed to often think I was zooming where other trackpads don't. Over here, notice this. This is a fingerprint scanner embedded in the actual trackpad. I actually don't have an issue with it because my hand or finger doesn't wander to the top anyway of the trackpad very often, and it, it seems to be what is state of the art right now. We've seen a few other laptops coming out with this, and it really is the trackpad manufacturer designed this, not Origin, not anybody else. All right, so now we get to play Dr. Science and open it up and look inside. First, you remove the battery, 
two latches. Easy to do. It's one of the few removable batteries, period, but gaming laptops do still have them, but it doesn't require what seems like three hands to do that. Two screws hold this, this is the front area, by the way, this panel on, so you just slide and pull out. Obviously, I've already unscrewed it, so you don't have to be bored watching me. And here we have an M2 slot compatible with both SATA 3 interface and PCIe, including NVMe drives. In fact, we have the top of the line Samsung 950 Pro M2 PCIe NVMe SSD in here. This is a 256 gig one. This is a, a drive bay that's available to you, and here is first drive bay, which obviously has a spinning conventional hard drive in it. You could put an SSD in here if you wanted, a 2.5 inch form factor one, or go with the conventional spinning. You get the idea. This here, four screws to take this off. There's four along the front and then one over here. And this slides forward. It's pretty stiff when you first try to get it loose. And there's the rest of the internals. Here are two of the four RAM slots. Now, with Origin PC, you can buy upgrades if you want at the time of manufacture. So obviously, they've done nice here and they put in Corsair Vengeance RAM, huh? Little charge for that kind of RAM in there, but we've got it. Here's your other M2 SSD slot. So we've got two 256 gig. You can get these things set up with a SATA RAID if you want. You can go with separate drives. You can order it any way you want. That's one of the nice things about Origin PC. The other two RAM slots, well, this gets a little bit uglier. Uh, they're actually under the keyboard. So you have to unscrew two screws and poke out the keyboard from this side, obviously opening up the laptop if you want to get to them. That is not oh joy, oh fun. So four slots. 16 gig is the largest module available on the market, so your max would be 64 gigs of RAM, which is a lot of memory, folks. Obviously, two very large fans here and lots of heat pipe action, and boy, does it need it. And boy, do you hear those fans constantly, as I said. So, I mean, they are very nice, large, high-quality fans. And once again, this is a Clevo slash Sager chassis that Origin PC is reusing and fitting with their own components. Got Wi-Fi in here, killer double shot actually. So you have gigabit E2400 Wi-Fi and you have 1535 AC Wi-Fi dual band. So pretty powerful stuff, pretty upgradable stuff in there. As you'd expect for a big 17 inch gaming laptop, ports are plentiful here. And we have some uh, cutting edge ports too. There's our gigabit ethernet connector right there, a Thunderbolt 3 port, a USB-C Gen 2 port beside it, and we have two regular old USB 3.0 ports and an SD card slot. And on this side we have the Kensington lock, lock slot, two more USB 3.0 ports, and a whole bunch of audio jacks. That's because this has pretty good sound on it. Sound Blaster X5 MB5 with the external 7.1 support and SP diff out. So, there you have it. Plenty of goodness for the audio here. And on the back, the giant round four pin connector is for the 330 watt power brick that this ships with us. It's about as big a power brick as you're ever going to see. It weighs about as much as one of the lighter Ultrabooks. Two DisplayPort, Mini DisplayPort 1.3, and we have an HDMI 2.0 port back there. And obviously, that is the exhaust area for the fans on the back. All right, while you're looking at the back side of the laptop, I mean, attractive though it is, and it's playful red color, available in many other colors. <laughs> Why am I shouting? This is how loud it gets. It's phenomenally loud. I haven't heard a 17-inch gaming laptop this loud. If that matters to you, if you don't want to wear headphones and keep the volume pretty high on the headphones, this might not be the laptop for you. It generates a lot of heat. It blows a lot of heat out. Look, here, we're going to put this over here, and it's going to start blowing that right away. That is a lot of heat. That is a lot of noise, folks. That is really something to consider if you're looking at this laptop compared to the Acer Predator. 17X that we recently reviewed with the desktop 980 card. Desktop graphics card, overclockable mobile quad core inside. That thing was nearly silent in comparison. This is pretty loud. And by the way, the power brick, if you, this is what it looks like. This is the big one here. This is as big as you get. 330 watts. It's big. It's heavy. I will say one thing, though. It may be extremely loud. It may push a heck of a lot of hot air out the backside, but it does a good job of keeping the CPU and the GPU at reasonable temperatures. When gaming, we average around 55, sometimes 60 degrees Celsius for the CPUs, which is just fine and average, and most games don't hit the CPUs that hard anyway. And the GPU, 
between 60 and 78 degrees, depending on what game we were playing and in what resolution. That's also centigrade. So that's pretty reasonable. And there are a lot of quieter laptops that have those temperatures too. So those fans are, are working to keep the internals cool and they are successful. So I don't worry about the longevity. And if you are wondering, the the fans, as you heard them, we were not overclocking the CPU or GPU at the time. That's just how it sounds at standard 4 gigahertz clock speed. There are two panels available, 17.3 inch in either case, obviously, that's the size of this machine, 1920 by 1080 matte non-touch IPS, which uh, has average color gamma. It's not a bad display. It's not super stunning for the price, but the, it has G-Sync. That's nice. And so does our 4K display, which is a beautiful high color gamut display, 95% of Adobe RGB, 91% of NTSC, and exceeds sRGB. This is a nice display for those of you who are also going to be buying this for film production, video editing, that sort of thing, photo editing. Wow. It's overkill horsepower for photo editing, honestly, but it's, it's a very pleasing display. You can get it pre-color calibrated, so if you don't have your own color calibration device, well, they'll take care of that problem. Gamma is a little high, even with calibration, 2.4. White point is 7,300 Kelvin, which is too cool. That's not unusual for laptop displays. It calibrates down pretty nicely to something closer to the look of, say, 6,600 degrees Kelvin, which is more color accurate. 349 nits of brightness, very bright display. Black level at max brightness is 0.52, that's decent. So the contrast ratio overall, overall works out to 7, 670 to 1. Good display, nice fitting. It's about a $336 upgrade. I, you know, when you're gaming 4K, whether you're gaming or not, it, but for gaming, I don't think 4K in a display this size makes much of a difference. You really can't see the difference between 4K and 1080p in the games that we've tested. But if you're going to be using this for photo and video production, then the 4K display certainly makes a lot of sense. The panel is made by AU Optronics, for those of you who follow that sort of thing, and the photos were made by me. I took the photos in case you're wondering where they came from control console to input the code and process your biological information. The speakers on this, by the way, are really quite loud. I think you could hear Far Cry Primal trying to drown out the fan noise. So for multimedia purposes, this thing has a subwoofer. It has awesome stereo speakers. Very nice sounding. Again, you'll just be fighting with that fan noise if you're gaming. It, uh, the fan is off and on, even if you're doing something like a, a decent-sized file copy, that sort of thing. But it'll get pretty calm if you're doing something like streaming Netflix. You'll hear it, but it won't be screaming. So it's usable for multimedia entertainment purposes, that kind of stuff. And overall, I mean, it's expensive, but you, you're getting a very powerful machine. It's nice to have choices. We reviewed a lot of gaming laptops. We have more coming up thanks to the new NVIDIA 10 series Pascal cards. This is the first that we've seen with the NVIDIA GTX 1080, and it is really a performer. If you want to do 4K gaming, plugging this into an external monitor where it's more worthwhile to play 4K, well, this is the one that can handle it. Obviously, you can do VR just fine. It's expandable. You can order with really nice parts inside. Origin is a company that stands behind their product and they have very nice customer service, so there's a lot to like about it. So there it is, a hunk of chunk of powerful gaming laptop. It's also, like I said, the loudest gaming, 17-inch gaming laptop I have ever heard. And goodness knows, I have reviewed a lot of these. So if you're not into heat and you're not into noise, this wouldn't be the laptop for you. If you are into something that is very high performance, very customizable, and you can order it customized from them if you're afraid to do upgrades yourself and you want the fastest graphics card currently available inside of a laptop chassis, not to mention a desktop CPU, well, then it's still worth a look. Just use the headphones when you game. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and maybe more cats.